If you are struggling to come up with unique capstone project ideas to you know, demonstrate your skills, I wanna help you out. I'm gonna share with you some of the methods that I use to find project ideas that are unique. And you know, if you're working on your portfolio, this will help you stand out. So stay with me because I really think after this video, you are never going to run out of ideas again on what to build. You'll be able to showcase something different in your portfolio as well, instead of just making the same kind of generic projects that you see everywhere. So why is this important? Why is it important to have unique projects to work on? I think it's because unique projects, they really show like clients, show employers that you can tackle real, like non everyday problems. You know, it proves that you can think critically and solve challenges that don't come with step-by-step -step instructions, just like following along with a tutorial. In my opinion, that is a huge reason why someone is hiring you. They want someone that can take on unique challenges where there aren't specific instructions. And as a result, they can come up with effective solutions. And also unique projects is exactly what's gonna help you stand out as well. And specifically a capstone project. So before we jump into you know, the best ways to find project ideas, give me a few seconds to talk about why having a capstone project is so important in the first place. A capstone project isn't just another project in your portfolio. It's a pretty large, you know, comprehensive project that showcases a variety of skills. It kind of acts like a highlight for your portfolio. It demonstrates your ability to take an idea from concept all the way to you know, full deployment. Ideally, it should show that you understand how to integrate multiple skills like front end, uh, like back end, uh, database management, all within one project. This is essentially where you are proving, you know, things like your problem solving abilities. You're not just showing that you can code, you're showing that you can think critically and come up with solutions, like I said, when the instructions are not there. This is why having something unique is so important. When your project is unique, it shows that you've faced unique challenges, not the same cookie cutter problems as everyone else building, you know, like a basic e-commerce website, for example. Now, it's probably important that you do know how to build an e-commerce website, but I don't think it's enough today. It's just not enough. You want something that really sets you apart from other developers and it shows this higher level of commitment and capability. And that also makes you more memorable as well. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's go through some great strategies to find ideas for a capstone project. One of the best ways to come up with a project idea is to solve a real problem that you've encountered. But like for a capstone project, you have to think bigger. Look at how you can incorporate like a full stack solution for that problem. Something that involves, like I said, integrating front end, back end and, and database management. So you would start by writing down three to five problems that you've come across like last week, two weeks ago, in the past month. By the way, these problems can be super simple. I'm going to give you an example. This weekend, my auntie is turning 60 years old and she wants everyone to come dressed up uh, like they're from the 70s. Now, I've never been to a 70s dress up theme party before. I've got no, no idea what to wear, no clue what to wear. And that's when this kind of idea hit me. I could build this 70s outfit generator platform. Saying that is a bit of a mouthful, but it's a unique idea. And this wouldn't just be like a basic kind of, you know, outfit generator tool. I'm talking about like a full scale platform. Imagine an app that fetches real time images from like a fashion API to display 70s style clothing. It could combine outfits intelligently, not just randomly, but in a way that sort of makes sense. Uh, users could create accounts to save their favorite outfits and they could even share them on social media. I could, I could you know, implement that functionality. I could also link, uh, link these outfits to e-commerce sites where the users can buy the outfits directly. And to make it even more interactive, I could add like a 3D modeling of avatars using something like 3JS, which would you know allow users to see the outfits on virtual avatars. I mean, you can just take it to different levels. And even on another level, I could use AI to create personalized outfit recommendations based on user preferences and past choices. Now, that's a lot, right? And if I built this, I'd be using like full stack development, like things like React, Node.js, MongoDB for, you know, the database, Firebase as well. I'd even master like API integration. I'd have user authentication, state management. I'd gain sort of more advanced skills in UI and UX design skills for the, especially for the 3D dressing room. I could even demonstrate some machine learning capabilities for like the personalized recommendations. And I could also demonstrate, you know, abilities in deployment and scalability 
if I wanted to deploy it on like Netlify or even AWS. So, I mean, you could see how just from this simple idea, there is a lot of tech that I could implement to, you know, deploy this project. Is this problem life-changing? No, of course not. But it would demonstrate me using a lot of tech that employers would like to see. And you would be solving very, like unique problems, like trying to integrate all of this together as well. And also I think it's pretty safe to say that I don't think anyone else would have something similar in their portfolio. So seriously, think about some problems that you have encountered recently and think about how you can use software to solve the problem on a full stack level. There are literally like countless ideas out there. And, and you know, by giving you this really silly and ridiculous example, I'm just hoping to get the cogs turning in your in your brain a little bit where you can visualize how you can start doing this for a project, you know, for a capstone project for you. And look, if you wanna build this 70s outfit generator project, go for it. Just make sure that you email me, I'd, I'd really love to see it. And so another great strategy to find a capstone project idea is to build a complete website, like front end, back end uh, for someone completely for free. Now, this honestly, when I think about it, has to be one of the best ways to gain real world experience, especially in web development. And it also showcases a project with actual utility, like it's actually being used by someone. You know, this is a real project used by a real person or organization. This is, that's huge. Because if this person is actually using the website, it shows that you can deliver on good work that someone would be happy to promote for their small business. And like I said, you know, that's, that's a really big deal. The next question is, how do you find clients? Well, Luckily, there really are so many ways to find clients. First of all, you can start by offering, you know, a free service to a friend or even a family member that might have a small business or they're looking to start a side hustle. You know, you can help them build a website for it. It's almost a no brainer for them because obviously you're building this website for free. Don't have any friends or family that you think you could do this for? Well, you can check out your local community boards. Like, you know, you they usually have them at the local shopping center. Uh, for example, you can find someone that's offering dog walking services and you can contact them and say, would you like a free website? You can also find a client uh, joining a few local Facebook groups that have small business owners in them and say that you would like to build someone a free website or you can even offer to build the admin of the Facebook page, a free website. And this is an idea that someone actually uh, wrote in a previous video of mine. So thank you for that. And obviously when you do this, you wanna be transparent. You just wanna let them know that you're a junior developer and you're looking to gain some experience. And this also helps you set realistic expectations with that client as well. But this is the most important part, just because you are now doing this for free, you're not getting any money for it, it doesn't mean that you don't take it seriously. You know, treat it like a real paid project. Look up their competitors, come up with some design ideas. And if you get the job, develop a really impressive looking site. Also, if you start to work with them, be professional, you know, use a contract, find some examples of draft contracts online, there's plenty. Uh, and this will help you to outline the scope of the work that you're doing and also set timelines. And you can also allocate some time after the project where you can do some revisions for the client as well. If this is not getting you excited then I don't know what to tell you but this is really a great way to build your skills when you apply for work as a developer if the website that you built is still live and you know it really should be it shows the employer that you are someone that can deliver on important projects you know you have the technical skills and you can also work in a collaborative team environment to create a project and that's impressive to anyone as well. And additionally, you're also showing that you've created a piece of work that someone is you know, proud to showcase on behalf of their own business or their own side hustle or whatever it is. Okay, so if those two strategies weren't enough to find a capstone project idea, here is another one. What you can also do is you can improve on an existing tool that you're using, or you can customize it to your particular preferences. And I'll give you an example, but just know that if you do this, not only does it teach you how to, you know, enhance features, but it can also teach you how to build on existing code bases, which you know, I think is super important as well. Now, for example, what can this look like? Well, I do a bit of journaling every now and then, and sometimes uh, I journal at a cafe or I journal at like a shared workspace somewhere where it's in public, you know, people are walking past my laptop screen and it can feel a little bit awkward if I'm being honest, you know, knowing that someone might be able to read what's on my screen. And I mean, 
you know, these are personal thoughts of mine. I don't really want anyone from the public to kind of read them. It just feels kind of awkward. So while I am journaling, I thought, wouldn't it be like a really cool idea to have something like a public mode feature where everything on the page is blurred out except for the sentence or the paragraph that I'm currently writing. Now, this tool might exist. I don't know, I haven't done a lot of research on it. It's besides the point. What I would build this for is essentially to add that extra layer of privacy while I was journaling in public places. So to do this, I would imagine that I'd probably need to either find a full stack code base online for an existing online journal, like as a template, or I could just build the entire journal myself. And then I could add this public mode feature on top of it, probably by using some sort of dynamic, you know, blurring effects with CSS, you know, state management to track what section is active at the moment, what, what section I'm writing on, and I would also need to work on some UI designs to help me switch between public and private modes. So the point is that there is heaps that I can learn while building this project and also solving some very unique problems along the way that I can talk about. I'm sure that creating this public mode sort of feature is not as easy as I think it's going to be. And I can talk about what I did to overcome it. There really is just so many ideas here and hopefully I'm getting sort of, you know, your brain thinking about it for yourself. Another idea that I had instead of a habit tracker could be like a coding tracker. I could use it to kind of log everything that I'm working on, what I'm struggling with, and then I could integrate it with some AI to suggest tailored projects uh, to help me improve in areas that I'm lacking. I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud here, but the idea is to take something that you're familiar with, enhance it, you know, add more to it, solve a problem, or give it some sort of a unique twist. And you know, who knows, you might build something that other people want to use as well, and you can get users for it. This could be great to showcase. So write down some of the tools that you're using right now and how you could improve them or enhance them for yourself and think about how you can make it full stack so that you can turn it into a capstone project for you. And so another strategy that I have is to also incorporate AI. So you want to be writing the trends in tech as much as possible. Uh, so building something with AI right now can also help you stand out in a big way. And obviously the possibilities are completely endless with, with AI, you know, just take any of the tools or problems uh, that we've spoken about in this video and think of ways that you can incorporate AI into it. You know, I've given you some ideas to think of and you can build on already, but don't get overwhelmed here. I don't think you have to do this, but it's just another way for you to stand out. And if you are gonna do it, I would think with AI, you need to kind of go beyond the basics. So for example, if you do build that website for someone and you know, you really should think about how AI can improve the user experience. You know, can you add a custom chatbot? that ask kind of qualifying questions when they come on the site. Can you use AI to analyze the user's behavior to offer like recommendations or products or content uh, on the site? Or maybe it can help with scheduling appointments. I don't know, like just think about it. You, know, you, you can also, you don't have to use it on the front end, you can also use it on the back end as well to monitor things like performance, you know, predict traffic spikes. Like I said, I don't know, this is where you can sit down with a client and you can see what do they need from their website and you can try and use AI to solve this problem. Building with AI is super important now and it can make your existing projects way more impressive. But like I said, I don't feel like you need to do this, especially if you're applying for kind of junior developer roles but I suppose it's a really nice to have and it will help you stand out as well. So it's completely up to you. And finally, if none of these strategies helped, which I mean, come on, I'm giving away pure gold here, but if all else fails, just get ChatGPT to help you generate some unique ideas and you can do it like this. So you wanna tell it your hobbies, tell it your interests, you know, the movies that you like, the video games that you like to play, give it some data on you and then ask it to generate some ideas for capstone projects. And this will almost guarantee that you will find something unique to work on. And honestly, if this strategy doesn't work, I don't know what else to tell you. Maybe being a developer is not for you. I don't know, <laughs> rethink about it, but this has got to work. You know, give ChatGPT some data and then ask it for some recommendations. You will definitely find a capstone project to work on. And I'll leave you with this. Here's how you can also never run out of project ideas. On my notes app, you know, on my iPhone, I have a projects document and as soon as I have an idea that pops into my head, I just write it down. Sometimes it's, you know, right before I'm going to bed and I just write it down. You don't know when ideas pop into your head, but just always have something available where you can write these ideas down. I've got heaps of ideas in them. I mean, literally you can scroll down the page. There's so many ideas on there. So I would recommend just start doing this, you know, in your day to day, 
and you're telling you you're gonna fill up this page in no time. There's just so many angles, you know, so many problems, so many different types of enhancements, and there's so many unique projects that you can build based on that and you can put them in your portfolio and it can be original. Also, if you do decide to build something, my advice is stay with it. If it's getting hard, that's exactly what you want to overcome. So stay with it until it's finished, you know, see it through to the end and document the process because this is the stuff that you can talk about later on, you know, what problems you were faced with and how you overcame them. That's the powerful stuff. And that's it. Hopefully you have a better idea on how to find unique project ideas. You know, hopefully I conveyed that well in this video. If I didn't, let me know in the comments, but you know, I'm almost guaranteed that after this, if you go through these strategies, you are going to find something. I really hope you do and I hope this has cleared up some areas of frustration for you. There are just so many project ideas. Like just, I keep saying that, but there really is. So go and find one, do it today. Like do it right now. As soon as you finish this video, go and do it. And if you end up building a project based on one of the strategies in this video, I'd really love to hear about it. So, you know, just remember build, don't just follow. Okay, that's it from me. I'll see you guys in the next one.